Happy E3, Aaron. Zach, happy E3. The best uh, week of the year. <laughs> and this is not even started yet, so we're technically yes, this is still, still pre-E3. Pre-E3, and one of the big conferences that I don't think anybody really saw coming, maybe, earlier. We're maybe a couple days late on this, because uh, it came out earlier in the week, but... Google did their Stadia Connect to talk about Stadia and they unveiled pricing and all the nitty gritty details that everybody wanted to know and we're going to talk about it. So I guess where do you want to start with this thing? Because there's so many details. Let's get the money stuff out of the way first. So the only way to play Stadia in 2019 is to be an early adopter. They called it a founder. You can you can pre-order now the Founders Edition, which comes with the controller, which has like the Google Assistant button on it. The Midnight uh, Blue Edition of the controller. Yes, it's a special Midnight Blue Edition. Uh, it comes with a Chromecast Ultra, which you will need to play on a TV. And it also comes with three months of, uh, what did they call Stadia it? Stadia like Pro. Stadia Pro, which is basically like PlayStation Plus or Xbox right. Live, whatever the Xbox Game Pass thing is. But it also comes with a three-month buddy pass so that you can play with your friends. Yes. And they pushed, like, you know, get in now so you can get your name, which uh, was a weird thing that I saw. So I guess it's not going to be tied to your other, like, Google account. It's not going to be like Google Plus where it just knows your name. You're going to have to have, like, a, a handle, like Xbox Live or anything else. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. But there's one other thing it comes with. Destiny 2 and all the expansions, including Shadowkeep. Ah, yes. That is a big important thing because uh, someone like me who has not a great computer, if I got Google Stadia, I could play max settings, uh, PlayStation, or, uh, Destiny 2 on my PC and it would look amazing. Or I could play on my phone even if I wanted to. Yeah. I don't know why I would want to do that. I mean, but, we talked about it in our Destiny stream that it might be nice to be able to go to Zur on the weekends if you're traveling, but mm-hmm. other than that, I don't know why you would want that. But Do you think you need a controller if you're playing it on your phone? They're definitely not going to support like on-screen controls, right? Yeah, I don't know. They didn't say... I would imagine you probably need the Stadia controller for that. You, you have to, yeah. Or at least some sort of Bluetooth controller. They didn't really get into that because I don't think they expect a lot of people to be playing it on their phone. It's just sort of an option, but I don't know. Yeah. Maybe they worked out some sort of on-screen conversion of the controls. So So anyway, let's say you're in wait-and-see mode. Come 2020, there will just be a free version of Stadia. There's a big Stadia base or whatever they called it. Uh, that's free, and that's just like an a la carte. Like, hey, do you want... Uh, what's a game that's coming out? The Crew 2? Then you can just buy The Crew 2, and you'll have it on Google Stadia. And Google Stadia as a service is completely free. And who's to say they might have like sales and whatnot, just like Steam and the Epic Store and free games for a month or whatever. But... Uh, that's basically the pricing model. 2019, I mean, the, uh, Stadia Pro is going to continue on, I assume, and you can subscribe, just like someone would subscribe to PlayStation Plus and just be getting free games. But, uh, if you don't want to do that, you can just have a Stadia account and just buy as you want. I like that because I, as somebody who buys a lot of movies through Google Play Movies and just knowing like my brother, for instance, who would probably buy like Red Dead Redemption 2 if it was available on Stadia, but he probably Mm. wouldn't subscribe to a game streaming service because he doesn't have enough time to actually devote to something like that. So I think it's good to offer both. Um, And also, it was unclear to me if the free version was, like, capped where you couldn't get up to 4K and that's why you had to pay, like, the actual subscription or not, but... I think that is true. I think the base is capped at 1080, 60 frames, 5.1 hertz surround sound. I think you only get HDR, 60 frames, 4K video if you are on Stadia Pro. 
Yeah, which is fine because one, I don't have a 4K TV, but also... Who does? Uh, you have to have a 35 megabits per second internet speed to run things in 4K with HDR video, 60 frames a second, and 5.1 surround sound. Um, yeah, they had a helpful graphic they uh, popped up, which will pop up now. So with just 10 megabytes uh, download, you can get 720p, 60 frames with stereo. And then with around 20 megabits per second, you get 1080 with HDR video, 60 frames a second. And then when you crank it all the way up to 35 megabits, that's when you're able to get 4K HDR video. I was Everything is 60 frames, though. Yeah, well, they did say specifically they wanted everything to run at 60 frames a second for the best possible experience, which, I mean, some of the games, surely, that they're going to have on this maybe natively run at 30? Like, I don't know. Maybe all the games oh, they have... they're going to upscale them? I, I don't know. I don't know how any of that would work. I guess... Destiny was the one I was thinking of, but I guess on PC it runs at uncapped frame rates, but uh, the console version is the one that's locked at 30, so I guess it makes sense that they could still deliver on 60 frames a second for that game, but... Let's talk about games for a second, uh, because they had a huge reveal. They revealed Baldur's Gate 3 as like a, one of their, I don't know if it's a launch title, but it's definitely coming to Stadia. Yeah, not an exclusive. It is also coming to PC. But yeah, that was a, a pretty big get for them as far as like games to reveal during their conference. So yeah. Did you play a lot of Baldur's Gate when you were a kid? I've never played it, but I did play Divinity Original Sin 2 and the people that made that game are making Baldur's Gate 3 and I know people love Baldur's Gate uh, 1 and 2 so so good. I think everybody's very very excited about that announcement that was probably the biggest thing for a lot of people even people that like don't care about Stadia at all were like very excited about the Baldur's Gate 3 announcement the only exclusive that I could tell that they showed that they talked about about was a game called Guilt by Tequila Works, the makers of Rhyme and Deadlight. I, as mm. far as I could tell, that was the only exclusive game. And I don't know. I mean, it looked all right. It didn't look like something I would necessarily buy a premium monthly subscription in order to play. <laughs> but I mean, I guess if it was there, you know, whatever. What did you think about some of these other games, though? I mean, I'm into Doom Eternal. Uh, they're gonna have Wolfenstein Youngblood. Destiny 2 is something now with the cross save, like yeah. cross save on cross save with that Google Stadia because you can play it anywhere. Right. Um, One interesting thing, and I don't know if this is a thing that is capable from Ghost Recon Breakpoint in other systems, like on other consoles or on PC outside of Stadia. They showed a little clip where you could see the guy in third person, and then on the right-hand side of the screen, you could see these little windows that were sort of like live streams from the perspectives of the people that that guy was playing with, mm -hmm. which is a very interesting thing. Thing that Stadia brings to the table that I don't think any other console can deliver on unless they're also doing streaming stuff. Um, I, I don't know. That's interesting. I don't know if it's necessarily like a make or break sort of feature, but you know. Yeah, it's definitely cool. Yeah. Um, overall, I was pretty positive on this. I liked that I mean, I, I, I'm bummed I have to wait until 2020 because I don't think I'm going to be getting this Founders Edition. Right. But uh, I'm I'm pro them having a free option a la carte. Like, if I can just buy, like, a, a weird little puzzle game or something that, that, like, latency isn't a super issue and then try it out, like, secretly play it somewhere at, like, my college or something and just, like, try out playing it in the wild, uh, I'm interested in that. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Like, the tech is definitely very interesting stuff. Like, it's very impressive what they were able to pull off with it. The The only question is how well it's going to perform, like, in the wild. For, so, like, when we did the Project Stream beta... I know there were times where I was like, oh, this is totally playable. Like, it's not great. It's not ideal, necessarily. It's not like taking advantage of my PC's hardware. 
uh, in the yeah. way I might like it to, but it's like certainly playable. It's, you know, as good as console quality, but there were other times because my internet is not consistent. And I think most people's <laughs> internet are not really super consistent is that it would go to the point where I just wanted to be able to download it and run it off my hardware and not have to deal with buffering and, you know, just pixelation and sort of, um, changing resolution in order to make it so that it was steady you know and that would get even worse if you were playing like an online pvp type of a game yeah that's a nightmare scenario yeah so i mean my biggest thing about stadia as much as i love the idea of it and i think that their implementation of it is far and away like surpassed my wildest dreams of what streaming games could be um i just think that maybe the infrastructure isn't there to support this yet at least as far as i'm for my stuff like in in the midwest the internet isn't quite as strong as other places but certainly my own personal internet is just like we always have difficulty recording where my we can't even maintain a a phone call because my internet is so shoddy at times so like stadia is definitely kind of not going to be an option for me it's definitely not going to be a consistent option and i think a lot of people are kind of feeling very wary about it because they don't trust their isps to sort of deliver on this uh concept and maybe this is the type of thing that sort of pushes the boundaries and makes isps and everything sort of get their game together and and, you know we kind of saw the same thing with netflix when it first came about where um it just it wasn't that great a service like the quality wasn't always great and um People were always, you had a lot of people that didn't want to stream stuff. They just wanted DVDs and Blu-rays. And I think that is now no longer an issue. So maybe in a handful of years, the same thing will be said of game streaming. We're just not quite there yet. You also brought to my attention uh, an article by PC Gamer about how much data you're going to be using streaming 60 frames per second at 4k yeah this is a big deal especially for anyone who has data caps but uh, pc gamer put together an article titled stadia 4k streaming will use up uh, one terabyte of data in 65 hours and they were talking in that article they sort of outlined that Google says it can provide a steady 60 frames a second 4K stream with a bitrate of 35 megabits per second. That's the high end of streaming requirements, while 1080p at 60 frames a second drops bandwidth to 20 megabits per second and 720. We already kind of went over that. Um, But that works out to around 15.75 gigabytes per hour of 4K streaming. 9 gigabytes per hour of 1080p or 4.5 gigabytes per hour at 720p. So even with a 1 terabyte data plan, that's 65 hours of streaming per month at 4K. And of course, all of that assumes that it's not really taking into account everything else you do on the internet that is also eating up data. So at 1080p, 60 frames a second, that comes to around... 113 hours of streaming per month, also assuming no other data usage. So if you have data caps, this is probably not going to work for you unless you don't play that much. All in all, as first, uh, as a moose bushes go for E3s, I would call this a good opener. Yeah, it was something completely new something that nobody really kind of knew what to expect from and yeah it was kind of an exciting way to kick off all the e3 stuff because again like game streaming that's what everybody expects the future to be and this was something not just from a company that's not really been in this space before but also just a a type of service that's just sort of out of left field from what we're used to closing thoughts about stadia i have come along come away from this pretty positive on it 
Uh, I'm very excited about it as the future. I just know I'm not going to be able to take advantage of it for a while, which is kind of a <laughs> bummer for me. But I think it's cool. I think it is the future. And if it does fulfills its promise, I, I've been saying this, it's sort of a different approach to resolving the problem that the Switch solved, where you can play your games anywhere. And you can start at home and then take it with you on the go. And uh, all of that is very cool. It's just a different way of solving that problem. And if it sort of frees not just me, but like other people who might play games, but uh, only play like a few games a year and they're not going to spend hundreds of dollars on new hardware every time they need to. Mm -hmm. Or like if it just frees you up from having to spend that four or $500 on PS5 or the next Xbox because you can now just play in a browser and let Google handle upgrading all the hardware in the back end. I think that's very cool. That's very compelling just from like a general user standpoint. The hardcore gamer is still going to want like that high end hardware because they want the most high end experience they can get. But Google has been talking about this as a service for everyone. So you have to think about it in their mindset as well, not just the mindset of the super hardcore gamer. So, <laughs> but yeah, I think it's good overall. Speaking of the future. Uh, you can, in the very near future, we're going to have a, a bunch more videos about all the rest of the conferences that are happening this weekend and Monday and Tuesday. I'm pretty excited about that, too. So keep keep your eyes locked to this channel because we're going to have nonstop coverage. Probably upwards of four videos. At least. <laughs> They're going to be in a, a playlist as well, so you can go check out the E3 2019 playlist on our YouTube channel. All right, well, we'll catch you later on. We'll catch you in 24 hours when EA Play happens. Yeah, let us know what you think of Stadia in the meantime in the comments. And if you like this video, give us a like, and we'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>